Hey, everybody. I am Captain Tommy Scoville. No, I'm not. The hell just happened? Oh, boy. You do that one too many times, huh? But I am Tommy Scoville. I'm just not the captain of this year vessel. I am the uh, the admiral of this year fleet. And uh, the uh, the captain is with me today. Uh, you know who else I got with me? I have uh, his uncle, the uh, V. I'm not, I didn't know it to you. I was gonna, but it's the Johnny Scoville. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use the L word and embarrass him because that's that's bad form, you know. Whether he's a legend or not, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, Tommy Stiggs, good to see you, man. Coming in from North Jersey, you know what? How do I get my kid in here? Calhoun, where are you, my my? Yeah, you know I'm not smart. Look at that! Holy hell, the three of us, the uh, Chili Kingmaker. Oh, Calhoun, he threw one across the bow. <laughs> I thought people were going to slowly forget about that. <laughs> yes, well played, Spanks. Not if well I have anything played. to say about it. <laughs> well played. Hey, is it is it too busy? Does the three work for you guys? Can you guys pay attention to three things at once? I'm just making sure. I don't want to. Uh, I want to. Don't want to do anything to uh, to over uh, over stimulate anybody this early in the morning. Um, Calhoun, I'm proud of you. You really Thank am. you. And and I dig the glasses. I was telling everybody right before we went live, you look remarkably like your uncle. Um, there's a gentleman <clears> by the name of Clifford who's uh, no longer with us, sadly, but his great uncle, I should say. Not his uncle. <laughs> Not her tumor, her pimple. She's my uncle. I, uh, remember Buck? <laughs> you remember Uncle Buck? No. Oh, I love that movie. movie. It's such a good It's movie. such a good movie. You just can't do it. The Three Amigos, right? SB, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> right so the three of me goes they look to the left and coughed funny funny movie rona i'm gonna do a little roll call charlie murphy what are you doing charlie mullins good to see you jamie smith what's up rona love it Kristen melinda fascinating absolutely fascinating you know big fan um, i'm not trying to out Kristen. uh Kristen. yeah maybe i am maybe i'm trying to out her uh no you're not gonna out her yeah Okay, well then I'll do it. Uh, she has a channel, everybody. I'm a fan. If uh, if if you got a wrench, can you put a uh, link up to um to Mrs. Melinda's channel? Because uh, oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Karen says, "Morning, gents. So happy when I make a live. Well, we're pretty darn happy when you make a live too. Hey, there's Tara smiling. Good morning. Um, yes, good morning, Mira. Hello, the Gemini girl. Carol needing a meeting." Carol's putting in amazing work. Needing a meeting is fantastic. If you've never gone over there and checked that out, you really need to. It's a, uh, it is a very, very cool uh, thing that they're doing. It, um, it smacks of a very early uh, lifeboat. Uh, Miss Sunrise Dawn says she does. Watched her last night. Well, how about that? See that, people? It is. Yeah, your cover's been blown. It happens. Calhounas. Yes. Did you know she had a uh, a channel? I did not, um, but I am a big fan of of Kristen herself. So you know who I'll have to go check that out. No, I'm not going to point any fingers. Oh, I was going to say it wasn't A. A. Ron, was it? Ooh, bad joke. Too soon. Too soon. (laughs) Too soon. (laughs) Oh, Calhounis. You know what? I'm just having fun. Just having fun. No, I love it. Hey, what's the? I love you. Hey, you Rose, yeah, well, we did that. Have a good time here. Uh, yeah, needing a meeting is awesome, Tara. To be sure, no, Calhoun, don't ever, don't ever do that. Take your, uh, take your foot and put it on the thin pedal. You are who you are, and this is your yeah. boat. Is I, your I thought boat. it was hilarious, actually. So it was a good one. You, uh, yeah. you had, uh, you had Johnny. The what really made it funny was the uh, too soon part. That's the part that was funny. Like that's the, that's the <laughs> hammer hole. Uh, Saguaro cactus. Good to see you. Relatable who? Uh oh. Uh-oh. All right, everybody. Everybody chill Kristen Krueger. Good morning. Tighten up your Flowers game. Flowers for you, too. Tighten up your game, everybody. <clears throat> All right, quit talking about it. Quit talking about it. Crazy, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Right? Not a bad-looking crew here this morning, all things considering. Although, I'll be honest, I'm uh, I'm the weak link uh, this yes, morning. Yes, Miss Sunrise Dawn. Yes, you do. In fact, I could probably do that right now while we're ripping. What are we ripping? Uh, nothing. Just yeah. as you were, as you oh, were. Oh yeah, sir. Don't, you know. Every once in a while, I see the uh, that that uh, c word. I don't know one from the other. I really don't. My uh, my uh, I'll get used to that. 
I still go on, even when I, I, I do a show with uh, Reese, I find myself going on and going, uh, Kevin, Tony <laughs> Scoville, you're wrong. But I just, I've said it way too many times. Like poor Johnny Scoville. Do you know how many times, like, and this is Chase the Heat, we, he'll be retired 25 years, you'll still be saying that, right? If, when you introduce yourself, it'll just be one of those things. I'm, I'm uh, Johnny Scoville. This is Chase the Heat. Good morning, everybody, says uh, Reese. Roberta. No notice on YouTube. Well, I got news for you, people. YouTube is dropping the ball, right? Across the board. Let me tell you just how bad. So I've talked to virtually everybody that I know who is a content creator. Everybody. What? All of them. Everybody across the board is getting kicked in the teeth, right? We are not seeing numbers um, that, number one, are real. And number two, the algo isn't doing what it's supposed to. Uh, it is not working correctly, and everybody is taking a hit. Reese says, I have lost 200 subs. Yep, that's and, and that's pretty close to where uh, the boat was. Um, you know, the related boat, because of the size of it, we're not really feeling it yet. You know what I mean? It's because uh, it's such a, um, a small channel. Uh, when he leaves a function, he does say, this was Chase the Heat. He does. He says that even when he leaves the restroom or, is- or the kitchen table. Yeah. Calhoun can back up. Seriously. Changes the channel, he says it. Okay. 5,000 videos? How many videos are there? 5,400. 5, I'm telling you, the Good guy changes Lord. the channel. He changes it's pretty the sweet. Channel. It's pretty sweet. Cheesy, cheesy. I've been speculating personally about what's going on with the YouTube. And I think, like, the most convincing theory that I can come up with is like, nothing has infinite capacity, right? So if uh-huh. all of our videos, our data is being stored somewhere on YouTube, it's physically being stored somewhere on like in hard drives, right? Or servers or what, how, I don't know how they have it set up. I don't, I don't do that. I'm not in networking, but you know, maybe it's, it's always growing. That also might explain why people are getting unsubbed, right? And maybe it's hit critical mass and they just need to upgrade their infrastructure, their, their hardware, right? Get more. Yep. I don't know. That's, that's a, my, theory. that's a solid, that's a solid theory. Calhoun was saying he thinks they need to upgrade the, uh, the, their software servers, thing, right? Their servers yeah. and everything else. He said, he doesn't believe YouTube's got an infinite. Yeah. Johnny Scoville can hear Spanks. One of the only problems I didn't have a pair of headphones for him this morning, but, uh, he just said that he doesn't believe they have infinite capacity. And with the number of, st- of things that are getting put up constantly, Calhoun, I think that's a pretty legitimate theory. Now, I will also say this. YouTube is kind of like the old school, right, of, uh, of platforms that you can go and put videos up on. Everything else came after, right? And, and the one that goes like this, back and forth, right? I don't even say it in the name. That one is way more popular among the younger crew, the younger crowd. I think the big red button is trying to to change up so that they appeal to a younger crowd. And I think that they're playing with the algorithm because for the longest time, like if you go over to this one, right, you, you can find yourself with a couple of hundred thousand subscribers in about nine videos, honestly. They, that the way that their algo works, they build people really, really quickly. They, the goal is to get you huge fast. People don't leave for that reason. So I think that the big red button may be trying to play with their algo to make it uh, a little bit less difficult. And I think in the process, they're kicking people off the of platforms, right? They're unsubscribing people left and right, and nobody gets notifications. So pay attention, right? By the it way, is- Christine, great to have you here. The boat, this boat is live at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. You could bet the farm on that, right? Okay? Is, is YouTube an American company? Well, this ABC is, a is the parent company. ABC is the parent company, right? We work for Google. That's It's owned by Google. And it is an American company. It is not. Okay. Yeah, we've, if, I've had people really uh, go around and around on this. Um, are, are there, is there any such thing as an American company anymore? I don't know. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, but, if they're based in America, that says a lot to me. It says a lot yeah, for me. Yeah, they so. are. They are. They're a Silicon you know Valley I mean? company. As um, opposed I'll, to th- this one is definitely not an American company, right? Correct. So it, I think that that gives a little insight into the landscape of why this also might be happening. If, if what you're saying, you know, it does, it does make sense. Um, they're probably competing. It's a com- competition between absolutely not only companies, but yeah. 
I so, digress. No, yeah, and, and no, it's a great discussion. It's why we're doing it. I, I believe, uh, right? Here's your takeaway from that, right? Here's your takeaway. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep, yeah. your, keep your nose to the grind wheel, right? And keep doing what you're doing because they're going to get this figured out. And I promise you right now that people are running because that's what people do. There are people right now bailing and going, man, screw this. They just, they just unsub 400 people from me. I have been, look, in the last two months, uh, we have lost 175 people. That's a net loss. It, and it never happens, by the way. We usually average well over a thousand a month. It is the problem because it happened to him. It happened to, it happened to Quibble. It's happening to everybody, right? If it were just happening to us, we our feelings would be hurt. But right. the fact that it's happening to everybody just means stick around, keep doing what you're doing because the people who are leaving are going to make a larger pool with a smaller group. And we need that. <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss, Kristen Kruger. Wow. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine how hard that is. Um, I know you said that um, you're fairly new to the boat. That's uh, my son is uh, sitting with me on uh, on camera, and I cannot imagine. I mean, I, the, it's not something that I can even wrap my brain around. All I can say is that my heart uh, goes out to you, and uh, um, thoughts and prayers uh, for you. Twelve years is an epic epic um success after uh you know in, for anybody right in the best of circumstances um but in light of that that's uh that's the most impressive thing in the world um my they, uh, know, best, Layla, I, go ahead my uh, my best friend took his own life uh i want to say six or seven years ago now so my heart goes out to you as well yep. remember that as well um and you have the Molesky, correct? I did deliver the Molesky to you. Just making sure. This goes just out to you. Just making sure. Yes, just making sure. The, uh, I know it's not a, a fun celebration anniversary, but no. But twelve years is epic. You know what? Yeah. In the face, in the face of uh, of uh, anything. Yeah, Shannon Smith. A lot of people have never been unsubbed. Um, there are a billion theories. Some of them have to do with how many channels people uh, watch or subscribe to. Some of the theories have to do with whether or not you watch on um, Apple YouTube devices premium. versus Android devices. One of the uh, theories that seems to be getting a lot of traction is when people watch on television, this tends to do something. Um, Interesting. Here's, here's what I would say. Check all the time. If it's a content creator that you like, check all the time. The good news is this. If you're here and you're watching, well, and if, whether you're subscribed or not, I mean, what we're trying to do is help as many people as possible, right? Try to stay sober, the, the subscription part. But the fact that people can't get notifications anymore is a bummer. But stick around. They're going to fix it. I get notifications, actually. If I have this, if I have it set up uh, 30 oh. minutes before, when the, when it ticks to 30 minutes before, it'll, it'll send me a message. And Get then it'll along. send me a message as it goes. Okay. Layla Bradley asks, happy Friday. Do you guys have any family traditions? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Other than eating hot stuff? stuff? Yeah, wait yeah. until Christmas. Um, no, we have uh, we have family traditions, to be sure. Uh, there are, um, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see it. Let's see here. But behind me is a, uh, a watch winder. Right, that is watching, that is winding a uh, a watch that that will be handed down for eternity, right, through the generations. One of the things that's great about watches are that you don't own them, right? I think Paddock, right, that's their ad. You don't really own a a, a fine timepiece. You keep it uh, for the next generation. So I'm holding on to uh, something that uh, was given to me by uh, by my brother. Oddly enough, my. Uh, my father gave it to my brother and in one of the uh, ultimate acts of uh, just, yeah, um, everything. My uh, my brother said uh, this was really more of a you and dad kind of a thing and, uh, and handed it to me. But, uh, looking good in blue, Miss Sunrise Dawn. Looking good in blue. Fantastic. Valerie Nagy says, oh, my God, it's three Scoville men for the price of none. You got to love that, right? Good way to start. There are half a dozen states. I'm glad you're here too, Tara. 
to have three of us in the, we wanted to settle in the same time. Yeah, I think there are there are states where I don't think the three of us should uh, could legally be uh, assembled in the, yeah, at the same time. Can you ask a uh, can you email me a watch question? Of course. Absolutely. You can. I'd love that. I would love that. I do like to talk about them. I do like to talk about them. Calhoun, are you noticing yes, that with the blue blockers, you get a lot less eye strain and a lot less uh, problems with the headache or are you noticing nothing? Um, it is a lot better, but it's a, um, it definitely isn't infinitely sustainable. Like wearing the reason I'm wearing the beanie is because it cushions my ears against these headphones. Mm -hmm. Um, and these also hit kind of tight on my temples. So uh, I try to tilt them up and move them around so they're not in the same spot. And when I'm done with the stream, I, I do something else that doesn't require me to wear them so that I can rest, but it is, it is, it is much better. Eyes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, resting your eyes is a uh, is a great idea. If I spend all day looking at the TV tomorrow, I won't be able to, or the computer, I guess. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, yeah. I use those words. Um, yeah, I, and, and you know what? I I should probably uh, say that more often, but I do use words interchangeably that I shouldn't. Like I say to people, I talk to so and so, and I don't ever talk to anybody. It's always a text message email. or it's always right. an email or it's well, always, that's a common thing. but I say, I talk to people and, but, but when you do this with what we do, I don't want to bum out all of the people who must think he talks to everybody, but me, I, I really don't talk to anybody. Um, but dirty mouse, I have, I've had that thought, but not, um, discovered where that function is, but that's like the first thing on my to-do list today is to turn down the brightness on my monitor. For some oh, reason, wow. StreamYard won't go dark mode. It'll just stay white. So it's really irritating. I was about to say to you, you can you can dark mode. I think any, everything online, but I've never been able to to make that uh, to make StreamYard go darker or or even dim. Um, but I don't know about your monitor. You know, uh, I got these at Miss Sunrise Dawn asks where I got these. I. Uh, just uh, the, that day my eyeballs were burning, I had a thought. I was like, let's walk down to Walgreens. And I walked in and asked the lady. I was like, hey, do you guys have blue light blocking glasses? And she said, I'm pretty sure they're over there right next by the photo center. And they were. <laughs> she had a, there was a, like one of those tourney things. And all it was was blue light glasses. Did you say a tourney thing? It was a tourney thing, yeah. You know, I it's like it. a pillar. And it was no, I know exactly on it. what you're and, talking yeah. about. I was uh, the, the second you said it, I knew what you were saying, and I don't know what I would have called it, but I think that's probably a, from this point forward. I'm going to yeah. be uh, going with the tourney thing. It's the, it's the uh, tourney thing. Yeah, because they're they're not. I was going to say you could call it a sunglass display, but it's not. Okay? The tourney things can be uh, finally made alive. Lydia von Stretchclaw. I love that name. We're just talking about you. We were just talking about you, Izzy. Thank you, Izzy. You are uh, too kind, and uh, you are appreciated. Thank you so much. I do love the name Stretch Claw, though. I do too. Right? I put up a great Man. video of uh, Squirrel Nut Zipper this morning. Man. I did. I put up a great one. Tell you what happened. Uh, in the morning, I watch Tommy Stiggs, um, or I listen to him, depending on what I'm doing. But when I'm getting ready for my day, um, I usually have Tommy Stiggs on. And the cat goes into, like... Zoom, 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 zoom mode and starts acting like a freak, right? Meowing, tearing stuff up. That's the four o'clock shuffle. Squirrel does it every day. So uh, after she runs herself silly, she comes and lays down right next to me and passes out. On her back, feet in the air with, with the stomach exposed. Yeah, that's the pose, Calhoun. You got this. Um, it's one of so my I thought, too. I'm going to take a picture of her while she's doing that. And I, instead, I hit video record because as i've said so many times if you tell her she's a good girl while she's asleep her tail just starts to wag in her sleep so i filmed it and it is really really funny lydia is a tortie no way i love i just have a thing for torties man i really do oh miss sunrise dawn i am sorry yeah i if you're not wearing a blue blocking uh, glass you really sh you really should be Especially if you've had five surgeries. Good Lord. And especially if you're spending as much time looking at screens as we are, you know, you, you may be spending more. Who knows, right? Um, well, and if you're wrenching for a couple of channels, then you're putting a lot of time and a lot of effort in. Yeah. Hello, Carol Barnett. Good to see you. I like I seeing would, the three of us together, too. 
Yeah, it's pretty great. I would wager you'd feel you'd feel the difference immediately, Miss Sunrise Dawn. I did from uh, the very first time um, Seven Sun had sent me um, uh, the first pair of uh, the blue blockers that uh, that I ever got, and it was instant. Uh, there really was. It was instant. Dirty Mouse brings up a good point. There are also products that you can put over your screens, like your phone or your TV, that will block the blue light out. Which I think I is infinitely more efficient, honestly. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna invest in that as well. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Dirty Mouse, I did notice that um, your uh, that your avatar looked remarkably like a torty. Um, I did have to blow it up to notice it, but I have done that in the past. You mod ten channels. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I it. said. Cool. Yeah, she's uh, hard at work. Yeah. You know? Uh, that is no, wildly impressive. More, uh, more really power to you, Miss Sunrise Yeah, you know yeah. what? I mean, I'll bet you I'm not on at least ten channels, but I don't ever perform right. the function. Like I'll show up and they'll immediately make me a mod, but I'll, I don't ever. Here is the only place I ever actually, and I don't even really do it here. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I try not to. Uh, I try not to take wrenches um, in in places. I'm. I mean, I'm 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 not a guy that should have a wrench. I'm not. Um, I'm an isolator too, Kristen. Um, but you know, if yeah. you've got your cats to keep you company, you're probably uh, you're probably all right. Well, Kristen, here's the thing. You know what? Being an isolator, I I get. I have been that person. I got out of uh, I got out of prison after the bank robbery stuff. Acted like an idiot. Went back to prison. When I got out the second time, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to talk to people. I'm not going to go near people that I knew. I'm not going to go to places where I knew people. And I didn't. I didn't go out. I didn't do a damn thing. I isolated, viciously isolated. And uh, it almost killed me. I'm not joking. The, it's, the opposite of addiction is connection, right? It is. Now, you can stay sober for a really long time without connecting with people but it will start to unravel you from the inside out. We are designed to connect with one another. And if we don't do it, it starts to, right? There's this thing that we have to get out, right? And we get it out through our mouths and connections, right? Talking to people. Um, if you don't let that out, it'll tear a hole somewhere else, right? For real. Um, Shannon Smith, I appreciate you being honest. She says, isolate and it's not a good thing for me. If, if and for some people, the fear of going into public is not, it's not just a, oh, I don't like going. It is a palpable, no joke, heart racing, not possible kind of a thing. If that is the case, then this is connection. This is possible. This is people talking to people, exchanges of ideas, beautiful stuff can still take place, right? That is an interesting comment that Ben Bacon Bits made. Absolutely love it. Introverts have strengths. We need each other because a bunch of extroverts will tend to run amok. No question, right? No question. I feel like I have James the potential. Parker, cold for Dartmouth murders. I'll be damned. Say again, Calhoun. I feel like I have the potential for both introvert and extrovert. It's sometimes like a like a, fl a flip, a switch flips. I feel like. Do you know why? No. I could because you're, speculate because all day your long. Mother, right? Because your mother is an definitely an, oh, very much so. And you're an extrovert. And I definitely am, am not an introvert. So I think that you you probably were exposed um, to quite a bit of both. And if you were to to look at the the vast majority of your mom's relatives, they tend to lean a little in that direction. Not all of them. But the vast majority of the people on, on our side of the family tend to lean to the extroverts, right? So it's a, it's a weird dynamic, Calhoun. I would imagine that you really, you know, you probably got the best of both worlds in a lot of ways. We used to joke when you were a kid, right? Your mom and I used to joke a lot because the, uh, you, you have, you know, you have a, a mind that would enable you to do things that mine would never be able to do right? Math, things that your mom was really, really gifted at. And your mother would say, oh, and he's going to be able to communicate like you. This kid's going to be, you know, he's going to be dangerous. <laughs> we used to talk all the time about it. 
Yeah, yeah. We were afraid my... you were going to run for president. We're so glad you didn't turn out that way. Go ahead. Yeah, if I could find my <laughs> way out of my head, I can be pretty effective. But there's always that trick first. Well, you know what, though? That's that's what we spend our whole life trying to do. Yeah, right. That's what we try to do. We try to get out of our own heads and, and enjoy life. It's the it's the it's the never ending battle. I think you're doing a hell of a job. I didn't start even trying until I was 46. Right. You got you got a great jump. Yeah, I don't think I would. Casey, good, good, good one. Sorry. I don't think I would be into being president. I think I would like much rather be like a revolutionary. Well, I think you, uh, as I said, I think we uh, think we got really lucky that, uh, you know, nothing bad happened. Um, <laughs> Izzy, great comment. It's a great comment, right? Mostly an introvert, introvert over here. Go Knock ahead. it out, Captain. But when I'm starting to isolate, I know I'm dipping my toes either into depression or relapse. The balance is hard. Peopling, peopling is exhausting. Uh, I imagine she means being social. But isolating yes. is deadly. And I have found, personally for me, that I definitely need a balance, right? Like, I do need time alone. I need my time, you know, that's not filled with anyone else's concerns or presence right but i also do need connection i do need a little bit of socially but i you know also i can't social too much i can't people too hard because then then i will will be drained right so i think it's an, an eternal fight for balance for me i don't know if that's how it is for you i was never any good at Keller, right um i was uh i was full bore i didn't give a crap about anybody on planet earth for 46 years and then I went to tell you what, I'm going to go the other route and I'm going to care about everybody. And even if it keeps me from uh, doing anything else. Right. Um, and that wasn't healthy either. Uh, right. So it's again, not, not introvert, not extrovert. You know what you are Calhoun. You're uh, you're like, uh, you know, you're like um, Goldilocks here. Right. It's perfect. Right. You don't want it too hot. You don't want it too cold. You want to, you, you kind of want to, you kind of want that, that porridge that won't burn you. You kind of want that bed that isn't too stiff or too soft, right? A little bit of, of being in the middle is a great thing. Um, I try not to be too you, picky. Yeah, well, there's, there's, you know, that's probably not a bad <laughs> thing either. ZW, good to see you. D. Audrey Gore, good to see you. Mira Deer, what's happening? Conversations with Christy. There you are. Good to see you. Um, yeah. Conversations are uh, the the concept of the interaction, the back and forth and the banter um, is such an important part of who we are. Uh, and it's even better. It's even better when you don't do it in an echo chamber. The uh, you know what? SPTV. Great, great example. People from every walk of life rally around the fact that they're disgusted by that cult because that's the rallying point. You have people literally from every walk of life. They could be from, from religions that people that believe nothing or people who believe political affiliation, every single walk of life. But the fact that everybody wants to see that taken down, it exposes you to things that you may never have, uh, have people you may never have met in the past. It's a very cool concept, right? Um, but I don't think it happens a lot anymore. And I think it's pretty cool that um, it, ha it certainly happens a lot here. You know, pretty proud of it. So Uncle Johnny can't hear me? Uncle Johnny currently can't hear you, but I was going to try to play with it. Here, can you can you give me patience? Just give me well, yeah, seconds. so I was going to suggest something. point the microphone. Like if it okay, was equidistant between the two of you, that would... Yeah, I'm say something. I'm saying things. All right, currently I'm not. I'm saying so many things. Just and keep, I might uh, just keep, keep I'll be right. I might right. just keep saying things um, oh, until yeah. the things don't need oh, to be yeah. said anymore. Or maybe I'll need so. to take a deep breath or uh, like a sip of coffee and I'll I'll stop talking for that. But until then, I'm just gonna say things. You know what? Stop. You don't have to stop talking. I can hear you. Is that gonna throw you off? Because you like hearing that. You know, no, listen, I, I think I can do this. Can you hear me, Calhoun? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Let's see. Yeah, don't ever leave me hanging when I say, can you hear me? That's when you fire I said back yes like 50 times. 
Yes, 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 yes. You can't hear me, can you? I hear you. I didn't hear you oh. uh, when I asked, but yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Venus Sorry. in Blue Jeans is here. Barbie ML4 is here. And you can hear Calhoun, can you not? I can. How about that? I feel part of it. That was easy. I was at the kids' table at Thanksgiving. I, you know what? Don't you want to be back at the kids' table? I'm still at the kids' table. I've never left it. No? The kids' table is no fun when you're there by yourself. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I guess um, for you, I think it's a little different because for you being at the kids table means not being at the adult table, which is a big deal. Um, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely a, a, a an angle. That Hell hath no fury. What's happening? See, thank Kristen you. Thank says, you, Christy. I, know, I like the kids table. Um, yeah, the kids table is fun. Layla Bradley asks how my parents met or how your parents met. Um, Uncle oh, Dad? Um, they were both lifeguards. One was a lifeguard really? at Jones Beach in uh, in New York, right? So um, an ocean lifeguard. And the other was a lifeguard at a pool. And uh, the two of them um, met through some uh, through a, a mutual friend who said, ah, you're both lifeguards. The two of them ended up um, meeting that way. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, yeah, crayons are uh, crayons are a good thing. Way more fun to break and then to peel the little things off than they are to actually color with. I was a terrible kid. How did There's you and mom meet? So satisfying about snapping a Crayola crayon. I really snapped did. quite a few. How uh, how did you and mom meet? Um, yeah, that's such an embarrassing story. Do you really want me to? Do that? Uh, no, I will do that. You're, I will do that. You don't. You funny. don't have to. No, it's funny. It, it's funny. It just says a lot about who I was at the time. I was uh, I was at a uh, a pool in Texas, and I was getting ready to leave. I had decided that it wasn't kind of my speed because at that point I was a degenerate, and this was kind of a healthy, wholesome place. And uh, I decided that I was going to leave. And as I was walking out, somebody walking in said so-and-so will be here in five minutes and he's bringing buds like B-U-D-S. And I jammed on the brakes because I thought the person that was about to show up had weed, right? I had just moved to this part of the country and I thought, oh, I don't know who's coming, but they're bringing buds. Buds turned out to be your mother, right? She was, uh, she was not, um, uh, a bag of weed. She was a, uh, a lifeguard at that pool, oddly enough. Another lifeguard thing. So uh, I met your mother that day, and uh, the rest, as they say, is uh, is history. Were you disappointed that she wasn't weed? No, no. I remember telling <laughs> her it was uh, it was a, it was a, a, a trade up at the time. I was uh, I was quite pleased that she was not a a bag of weed. Nice. Uh, and because of you, hindsight being twenty twenty, I'm still glad she wasn't a uh, a bag of weed. So what do you think of that? Um, Replay day. No, you're here in time. You can catch us. This is live. Don't forget to leave your DNA on the like button. And you know what? We are live. Hit that subscribe button. Hear that, Johnny Scoville? People, hit that subscribe button. We're fighting. We're fighting a uh, a battle here, right? So hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends about it. This is a legit battle. You on the bike. You on the bike. You girl. Uh, Oh, wow. If Tommy hadn't thought someone was bringing weed, Spanx might not even been here. What true story, right? Absolutely a true story. All of the things that had to fall into place for, uh, and I, I don't think, I don't think about those things all of the time. For real, all of the time. Oh, You're an inspiration, like Pops. Love that. Pools are a great place of connection, says Piano Mom. Piano Mom, I spent a lot of time at the rec center pool. I, uh, some of the first uh, the first girl I ever dated met and uh, fell in love at the rec center pool in the town that you live in. Pools are a great place. I had a pool uh, growing up. We had a pool at the house, but I always had so much more fun when you could go into town. There were, you know, the 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 local pool was just such a hoosh, and I lived at it in the summer. You needed, yeah, it. you weren't there. You weren't. Everything that was going on in the world was happening. You know, we lived in a very small town. Everything in the world that was happening was happening right there. So if you weren't there, it was like, 
I'll just Lacey, have to catch up, you know. And... Lacey Silver's son turned 16 today. Oh, wants, wants us three to wish her him a happy birthday. I wish I knew his name. Yeah, happy you. birthday. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to go with happy 16th birthday, Lacey Silver son. Silver son. Silver Lacey Silver son. Lacey Silver son. son. It sounds like a name you make up when the police pull you over. <laughs> What's your name, Lacey Silver? That's just when you leave her house. I eat Lacey Silver. Silver Lake. Been there, done that. His Ooh. name is Earl. I there the you first go. Time I swam across that lake. I remember the first time I swam across that lake too. That is a that that's a, a that's decent a rite lake. Of passage. It is a rite of passage. Yeah, that is a, that is a lake that's tough to swim across. I mean, it happy birthday, Earl. Earl. All right, Earl. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday Earl. Birthday, dude. You're not 16. just yeah, not just, just easier. Yeah, not just a birthday. This is a good one, man. Big one. Yeah. Now. Independence. The next license. 10 years are going to rock. Even you're close, right? You, you are doing the driver's license thing, right, Earl? Yeah. Because they're talking about how some kids your age are not like doing the driver's license thing, man. Get the driver's license, Earl. It's independence. Yeah. Starts right there. Bring back the 80s. It's just like your first bike, but with a motor. Remember but with a motor. Bike, you can go anywhere you want. Yeah, and you it's can't like put three motor. friends on a bike, right? Well, I mean, maybe you could, but really would be hard. Happy birthday, Earl. You guys are a riot. I love it. Hey, it's Tony Mor Zuder. M mornings are way fun with you guys here. It's uh, well, it's like hanging out. It's it's a it's a family gathering. Really? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't going to. Oh, he got to. I mean, look, not for nothing, but I mean, it, right? It's 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 horrible. It's sexist. It's all that. But you need a driver's license. You can cruise chicks. You come on. Right? You can't do that on foot. You just can't. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get my driver's license until I think I was 20 or 21. It was uh terrible. Not for lack of wanting, but it was something that at first was like a punishment and then and then it just oh. never happened. That that had a lot to do with with um, you know, your dad too. I mean, if if I wasn't where I was, that would have probably been a different situation. I would have been probably. far more gung ho to help you, I think, than uh I mean, you had me driving the Porsche on a sitting on a phone book, so I'm I'm sure. I I did have I did have Calhoun driving a 911 with, with the uh, needed to to get was it a phone book? I had something under you. I, I was definitely sitting on something. It might have yeah. been your lap, for all I know. I, oh, I no. can't imagine that I was long <laughs> enough to do both functions at the same time. You know? Oh no, you were in the driver's seat. I was in the passenger seat. You can ask your uncle. <laughs> was that? No, I you were coming this right, way. But I don't know how he, he was controlling this. But you were I, doing it. Now, in my defense, people, right? It's not like we were on the freeway. This was right next to my house, right? Or, or where we lived. It was apartments. But it was right on the little road to my apartment. Now, it was a real road. It's not like I was in a parking lot, but you killed it. You hit it out of the park, right? He was Shannon Smith. Calhoun was shifting. The purpose no. of the day... All right. The purpose of the day was I took him down to the school that uh, he went to because he said to me, what are you doing with your feet? That's what happened. We were driving and the Porsche was fun, right? So we were going through the gears and driving like an idiot. And he said, what are you doing with your feet? And I said, I'm shifting. Calhoun has the, the clutch and I'm explaining this. And he was like, so is it hard? I said, oh, I'll show you. <laughs> so I drove down <laughs> to the school it was a Saturday, so I drove down to the school that, uh, and it was the summer, I think, too. So, but I drove down to the school he was at, a huge, huge parking lot, and uh, I put him in the passenger seat and I explained to him. And Calhoun was a very analytical kid, so the the seat jammed up as close as it could. The hard thing was you really got to push the clutch on a on a Porsche. It's not. It's not like other cars, like it really, but when I said to him, you're going to let it out slowly, right? Everything I told him to do, he did. He didn't buck the car. I taught his mother to drive a stick shift and he did way better than his mother did. Um, yeah, his mom almost destroyed my car <laughs> for real, but that was, uh, you know, I was uh, being a little, uh, a little anxious, you know. What a story! <laughs> I was just. Uh, he wants there. a '60s Mustang. Well, you gotta get a get a beater car the first time, right? I wanted a '60s Mustang when I was 16 as well. I think you should have fastback. One. I think you should have one. 
Spanx is not shaving his head. Spanx has great hair. I think he'll probably, uh, you know, every once in a while, you, you get lucky. Calhoun's got great hair. I would imagine that uh, that's not going to be a change. Real great yeah, hair. I, uh, you know what? You really did have great hair. Like, I never really had gray hair. You're ugly. I, I just had, I mean, I, I had hair. I could zoom in on his camera. I totally would. What's that? Who on, on, uh, on his hair. On Uncle Johnny's? You're not going to get too much hair on that. There wasn't, but there was a time. Oh, there was a time. Um, I have a neighbor that has a, uh, I have a neighbor that has a 1968 Mustang and a 1970 Mustang. And wow. both of them are perfect. Absolutely perfect. I stopped the other day and asked what years they were. And since I happen to have been, um, you know, made in 1970 uh, as well. I said, boy, that thing's in better shape than I am. Mr. Merck, Mick, Merck, Mick, Merck, Bastic? Bastic. Yeah, I do that every time I try to say his name too. Yeah. Oh, no way. Do you see this? Hmm. My first car was what? Boy, Christy, you were a spoiled little thing, weren't oh, you? I'll tell you what. You were a, a spoiled little thing. Nothing like a classic. Right, forever, like a legendary classic. You were driving, you were driving a 280Z <clears throat> with a stick to uh, to high school. You spoiled, spoiled. And I'm not Is, mad at um, you. I'm just saying. But what's uh cousin Scoville up to, um, Uncle Johnny? What's your Philly? boy doing? Um, he's he's working a lot. He's I uh, just sent him a bunch of product uh, reviews, so he's pretty stoked about making videos. But he's working a lot right now. Cool. I'm gonna yeah, go I check this stuff out. Let me do that just for a second, if you don't mind. Nah, my daughter better. just won an award. I didn't show it yet. She just won an award yesterday for having a 3.85 a graduating GPA you in pre-med, and, and she's just amazing. The, she was on a research, a cancer research study last summer, and it just got published. She's amazing, and she graduates on the 11th. Can't wait. Yep. Congratulations. We no no names, Calhoun, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's easy to forget that. That's why I said it. But uh, <clears throat> in South Africa, automatic cars are in the minority. And if you get your license, and if you get your license with an automatic, you can't legally drive a stick. That ought to be a law everywhere. It was in our house. Yeah. In our, in my, uh, that was a mom law. She's like, my mother. Drive, we had, the old man had a sports car with a stick. Yep. My mom had a grocery getter with it. It was an automatic. She's like, if you take the car in the automatic, that's all you're driving. So we all learned how to drive a stick. Yep. She said, if you're going to learn to drive, you're going to learn to drive on a stick shift. And you learned early. Because the minute they'd leave and go out to dinner, we'd go out and drive it. I did learn really early. The other thing was, one of the other reasons that I learned really early was because we had a Datsun B210 that was no longer for transportation, really. For wood. It was for hauling wood. You know what I mean? We cut and split wood all hauling. of the wood that we used to burn in uh, in the Northeast. We cut and split all that wood ourselves. So we would fill the trunk with wood. We would be driving that thing through the field and beating the snot out of it. But I learned to drive. Um, uh, I learned to drive a stick shift. And I will tell you, the greatest rally drivers that ever never won a race came from our town. I promise you. Because just getting to the high school, piano mom knows what I'm talking about. There's a, a stretch of this road from the high school to uh, to a town, one town over. It follows the river uh, <laughs> and goes like this the entire way. And it has claimed, unfortunately, a lot of people's lives. The name of the, uh, it's called the Ottaquichi River. Ottaquichi? The Ottaquichi. Yes. We ought to, we, we ought to, Quichi. Tribe. Yes, the, uh, the <laughs> Ottaquichi. I went more to the corners sideways in that town than I ever did driving normal. Yes. Are they kind of like the Copa Squatties or is that different? Yeah, a little different. A little different. But uh, you get the idea, though. Uh, a friend let me drive his El Camino stick shift. Took five seconds till he said, get out. <laughs> That's funny. That is really funny. I really, really, really um, was uh, – I, I had a pretty big crush on his mom. That was the only reason that I was letting her uh, grind the, uh, the gears of my uh, Honda CRX which at the time was, you know, this was not a, a used car. That was a new car, <laughs> right? Those, those were brand new. And she was, uh, yeah, but she got good at it. She got good at it. 
Yes, people do put memorials on the side of the road for crash victims in the U.S., Deodre Gore. You see them a lot. A lot. See my family. An inordinate amount. Lots of people die in cars. Imagine yes. that. It is tragic. Tragic that Running we don't the treat gears that. is a bad thing, right? No, uh, Kristen, I was, uh, I was, yes, I wasn't uh, using that as a euphemism. I was, she was grinding the gears. Uh, Literally. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Yeah. Ben Basically, says, yes, that means you just don't keep on the gears need to be smoothed. <laughs> oh, you've met my wife, uh, my ex. Savage. No, she got very good at it, actually. She really did. How about that? Thank you, Zarina. Yeah, no question. I learned on a number of piece of crap cars that had terrible clutches so now when i get in a manual i'm pretty decent because i have i have learned on the worst clutches possible like about to fall out about to burn up clutches terrible you know what the clutches. last time i saw us they don't make clutches anymore really i'm sad i'm saddened by this what do you mean like they don't make manual vehicles anymore yeah, so most most manufacturers have literally discontinued the uh, the clutch. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the only like hopped up sports car you still that still comes standard with one is the Porsche. Um, I don't think anyone else does it. Last year, the car sold one point seven car percent one point seven percent of the cars sold in the entire United States were standard. One point seven percent, so ninety nine percent. I mean, it's it's going away. You know what? It's going back. away. Hmm. Um, Cat, I also drove on a Sears lawnmower, but it wasn't a Sears. It was. Three two stride, baby. No, it wasn't. It was a. Uh... Let's see if he gets it. Hang on a This is a tough one, Calhoun. Because it's. I don't think they're in business anymore. It's not an easy one, man. It's not an easy one to get. He's got it. But I know Frank Brock thought of it. What he called it. He did. Let's not go there. Not... I don't Rutland, Rutland, Rutland. I don't remember. Uh, what was it? Montgomery Ward. No way, Monkey Ward. Yeah, it was made at Montgomery Wards. That's what. Uh, in the, uh... that, you guys, there was a time where that was like Sears. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was yeah, a pretty. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Sears is gone too, by the way. Yeah. I rock a Kubota. Okay, rub that in. Yeah, that's a serious. Uh, that's a serious machine, though. Kubota's the real deal. Yeah, that's the real deal. Now I have tractor envy. Thank you. Right. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, it's uh, you know what? This is um, this is not so bad a time of year. This you don't wouldn't want to come in July, right? You don't want to come to uh, to Arizona in July. But this is a lovely time of year. Dirty Mouse says monkey wards. Yeah, that's that's what everybody used to call it back then too. Yeah, I think uh, it's I a good go my, go time of year to use the hammock. I think. Perfect, Perfect right? Hot. As long as you're in the shade, I think it would be great right, right about now. Kmart is gone. Woolworths, you know, everything is gone. They're uh, they're going away. And things that you would have thought at the time were like, it could never go away, right? How could Sears and Roebuck, I mean, Sears and Roebuck ever go away? That could never happen. People thought, nah, it's too big to crazy fail. talk. It's too crazy to talk. The companies that are successful now um, and the comp and the companies that have gone out of business that you thought never would have very distinct um, characteristics that define them. I think that the ones we never thought would fail were like good, good home uh, American companies, you know, good old fashioned household names, right? Sears, um, Kmart, all these things um, with American values. I think the companies that have made it have sold out and are saving money. The reason that they're making it is because they're employing um, third world, whatever, you know, they're doing the dirty thing with the, with their workers. They're hiring people from third world countries and whatnot to, and paying we, them dirt uh, and whatnot. Well, um, I think you actually, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're right on the money. I mean, if you look at the largest initial public offerings that, that took place on, um, on wall street, you know, recently, uh, you look at like Uber, right? Which would be, I guess, like a taxi cab company, right? But they don't mm -hmm. own any taxi cabs. Nope. They don't own any buildings or garages or anybody that works on them or anything like that, right? But their value cap is bigger than any 
cab company on earth in spite of the fact, or better, an even better example would be Airbnb, right? They do not own a building, but they are classified as you would say uh, Marriott. Okay? Now Marriott owns a lot of land, right? Wyndham's, all of, the, but if you take all of the hotel manufacturing, I mean, all of the hotel chains in the US, right? Put them together, all the major ones, Airbnb's market cap, their value was higher than all of those uh, people put together. Hilton, Hyatt. So what you're saying, Calhoun, is the, tr the truth. Now what's happening is they're just you get you get paid to consolidate. You get you get paid to organize so that everything is just a little bit more streamlined. So I'm not really going to sell you anything. I'll just get a really good hookup with some people in China and I'll sell you. Yeah, Marriott and Sheridan. Thank you. Um, you take the two and uh, it's, it's a, it's a fascinating, um, it's a fascinating slide, right? But unfortunately it's, it's what's happening. We're watching, uh, we're watching the, uh, the death of, um, you know, of, of companies that unfortunately didn't, uh, didn't evolve. Right. And, you know, and if you really want to, I, since I don't live here anymore anyway, we'll throw this one across. Um, and the truth is, this was invented by, right, your friend that uh, the, the real dirtbag is the guy that uh, that started Amazon. Because when Amazon started, what he did was he started selling books, but he would buy a book for five bucks and sell it for four. Right. And you can do that if you've got enough paper coming through with your stock to keep you floating. But what you do in the process is you make your competitor impossible to compete. So all those little mom and pop bookstores all over the United States went out of business. And once they had the market on selling just that one thing, right, then they could start saying, well, I got a distribution chain. Now I can plug something else into it and I can plug something else into it and I can plug something else into it. And pretty soon. Genius, really. Yeah, you can get anything from one company, right? You know, it's very interesting. I've been watching this series uh, called Fallout. Um, some people may be familiar. It's modeled after a video game that's quite popular, but the Fallout universe is about, it's a fictitious universe where after World War II, we heavily invested in nuclear fission rather than microchips and computers, right? So right. in this Fallout universe, the world is stuck in the 1950s for some things like the TV and radio and media. But um, we have nuclear powered cars, we have um, um, advanced robotics, we have very different technologies, right? And in this universe, the corporations are basically uh, running the, the show. Um, what we're talking about right now has continued to progress in this fictitious universe to the point where um, the biggest companies in the world are defense contractors, and nuclear annihil like fallout shelter building companies, right? These companies yep. get together and then say, hey, uh, why don't we drop the bombs ourselves to guarantee profits? And then the fallout's about after that happens. Yeah, well, it's a great uh, concept for a show. And by looking in the uh, comment section, I would say that uh, a lot of people are, uh, are digging on this show. Uh, there's a lot of people that are saying, um, yeah, they uh, they they have been known to save economies, um, which is a, a pretty frightening thing. But they're it, not. Um, it's very important to make the distinction. They are not profitable for the people that fight them. We do not get weapons contracts. Uh, yeah, the government does. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I'm not seeing a dime. I'm seeing hardship. Right. I'm seeing I'm you know, I'm being it's a little it's different for us, but they are profitable. They're profitable for the people that uh, say, go do this, go do that. I have a chair. Yeah, it's definitely not profitable for the uh, for the dude wearing all of drab camo. No, nope, definitely <laughs> unfortunately. Not. Right. It's really not too profitable for the people that they're saying, uh, take that hill. Um, yeah, I, Shannon, I think we knew we knew you didn't. It's it's just it. But it is it's ugly because yeah. the people that, you know, that. I think that there was a time, right? I think that there was a time when, uh, when men really wrestled with concepts like we're going to send people here and we're going to do this. And you read some of the, uh, some of the things that, um, that wartime presidents wrote, 
you know, and uh, and how they wrestled with the fact that their decisions were going to be uh, killing people. I don't know that those that those kind of leaders exist anymore. Maybe I'm a cynic, but I just don't think that, you know, they, they wrestle with those decisions. I think I think back in the day when when you sent people off, you waited for news to come back. Right. It wasn't. Now it almost seems fake. Right. Now, well, now the market's old, flooded. What's that? You know, there's a whole lot more of everything that's less quality because the accessibility is higher. Does that make sense? With yeah. everything being online and whatnot, did I? I might have derailed you. My bad. No, no, you're good. Um, Ron, yeah. you woke up your torty. You shouldn't have done that. Um, Oh, no, in Ireland. Yeah, Northern Ireland's tough. Uh, I think that uh, Chris and Melinda says, yeah, I believe Abraham Lincoln and George Washington probably agonized over those decisions. Uh, just guessing. No, I believe. And they wrote about them, right? There's some pretty incredible uh, stuff that they wrote about. Um, and maybe, again, maybe I'm really a cynic. Um, but I think in the world that we live in now, it's like a video game. And I don't think that it seems it, you know, when you send somebody in for the uh, for the raid on uh, to get what's his yeah. name, now, the guy that took down the towers, oh, uh, Bin Laden. Bin Laden, all right, and they're watching it live on video. It's just a different world, and, and I don't. This is the one I think that changed everything because that was the first time we sat at home and watched a missile go into a tent. Yeah. And we we're like, wait a minute, if we can throw a missile into a tent and watch it go in there, why are we sending anybody? Why are we putting boots on people? If we can do that, do we want to make it? Uh, clean and and, and uh, yeah, I don't think no they spend to... a lot of time thinking about it, Serena. I think you're right. I don't think they spend the. I mean, it's uh, any way you shake it, it sucks. You know. Well, I mean, there are quite a few humans on the planet. Um, you know what I mean. I think we could probably do with some less. I'm not saying that I uh, support killing people, but. I mean, the overpopulation thing is going to solve itself one of a million ways, right? I think this is you just a terrifying. side effect. It, it, it here's here's something that's uh, that's odd. And let, let me this fi finish is, my thought first. I think it's oh, like a okay, supply sure. and demand yeah. thing. The value of life is going down because lives are going up. Anyways, go ahead. Your turn. Um, if you don't have two point seven kids, right? If everybody doesn't have 2.7 kids or 2.3 kids or whatever they called the nuclear family back in the day, then I'm working the on that point seven right now. The, then the products and services that are uh, manufactured in your country, you don't have anybody to buy. The second thing that happens is you don't have anybody to take care of aging populations, right? So you end up with a uh, it, it becomes a dynamic where as the populations get older and there's nobody else to take over, there are people out there currently who are saying that. We stand a better chance of, of going away as a society because we're not having enough kids versus overpopulation. I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but read a couple of uh, well, of this is Elon Musk. That, that's Elon that's Musk, very Elon Musk is pretty uh, pretty high on the uh, concept. That, sorry, sorry, that's Colin. A, that's a very astute observation, and it's not just us. There's a lot of countries going through this: China, Russia. Um, there is going. There is a generational gap. There are families in America that have upwards of five kids, and then there are lots of families that have no kids, right? So I don't know the statistics, but I, you know, there is a wide range. I don't we're, think that there are is, a whole lot yeah, of people in China having five kids. Been. You know what I mean? I, I still think our numbers America. are higher than theirs. Well, so this is the lowest right. America's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent by, by a landslide. And the thing with what what made China really bizarre, and we could talk about it for for years because it's fascinating, but that they, they would abort. Um, yeah, the the right, one gender you know, and not the know, other because kids. it was more desirable to have a certain gender. I think that was right, and and because insidious. of that, like they did not, and they had a one child rule. So you can it, only have one. Really created a very odd situation for themselves. Now, you know what I'm going to do? Geniuses. I'm leaving geniuses. YouTube photos because I have an appointment that I have to be on at. Oh, I do. I like how you said you were going to hang out for a half hour and you did the whole yeah, dang the thing. Train wheels off and the boys are going to run with it. Yeah, the, the wheels came right run. off, but we you're were just sledding. Stars. All right, I'm Captain, you got this. Take Love it you guys. Out.
Now get out of here. Get out of here, yeah. Well, that was fun. I always feel um, uh, like a difference in energy when I've got them on um, because their energy is so different from mine. It's a, it's a, I feel like a, a must, I must take a back seat um, when I'm here with my dad. It's hard to uh, be more excited than he is, if that makes sense, but I'm working on it. Um, I felt a little weird yesterday in my evening, um, evening boat. So uh, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and feel better today. I already do. I'm really happy to see all of you. We had a great time. So hit that like, subscribe, bell for notifications. And we're gonna, uh, yeah, have a great day. Make it a, make it a great one.